Follow the leader. Right there's your leader, Zachary. Follow him. All right. Can we just slow down a little bit? We're going fast this morning. I want to keep it simple this morning. The gospel is so simple. It's so simple to understand how Jesus wants us to live, what he wants us to do. The problem is that the enemy will come in and he will create an optical illusion and he will make things seem as if they're not. And they'll make, he'll make things appear to be something differently than what they are. And sometimes we get comfortable in that distraction, in that facade. We get comfortable with that. And I want you to know there's truth this morning in who you are. There's truth in your identity this morning that God created you to be the amazing son and daughter that you are. And if you're not, he made a place for you. Romans 3.23 says that we've all fall short of the glory of God. All of us. From the beginning, every one of us have fallen short of the glory of God. That includes me. That includes Billy Graham. That includes some of the greatest preachers ever known. They were sinners at one time. Fallen short of the glory of God. But Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. So the price of our falling short of the glory of God is, is actual death. But here's the thing. Jesus, in the latter part of that verse, the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. What do you think of that this morning? The free gift. It's a free gift. Listen, the atmosphere I feel like is a little tense this morning. I'm not sure why, but I want to break that off right now. There's some people here that are sick. They're struggling. They're battling with, with life issues, life like life and death issues. I want to encourage you this morning that if you're facing an issue like that, you have life in Jesus. We've all died out to the world, or we're supposed to die out to the things of the world, but we have life in Jesus, whether it's here on this planet or in another place. That doesn't matter. The, the thing that matters is that we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So I want everyone just to, for a minute, and the Bible doesn't say we have to close our eyes, but it says watch and pray. But I want you just for a moment to close your eyes. Father, we feel the heaviness of the hearts this morning. Maybe you're letting us feel this heaviness, Lord, that they're feeling. And God, I speak right now into the atmosphere. I speak peace. I speak trust. I speak honesty in the atmosphere right now. That because we are children of the Most High King, we are sons and daughters of the priesthood of heaven. We have full access to everything that heaven has. So, Father, this morning, I just pray that over everyone here, whatever the battle, whatever the struggle, whether it's finances or whether it's your life or death, I speak peace into that situation. I speak the glory of God will come down and reign right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to continue to pray. God is going to move this morning. Some of you are full of hurt and pain. You're struggling. You're battling. You don't know what's right or left sometimes. Some of you are on the edge of, of, of think thoughts of suicide. How many of you in the past week, you can keep your eyes closed, have thought of suicide? I mean, how many of you in the past week have thought of that? I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I'm not just looking at my own. People 
are struggling. People are struggling in this world that we live in today. They would rather end their life because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to go because the enemy of the world is trying to bring a distraction to them. He's trying to bring an optical illusion to them and tell them they're not valuable or even tell them that they are valuable and create a lie along with it and let them stay in the sin that they're in and speak that it's okay to live a sinful life. It's okay to live how you're living. Yes, you're valuable in the sight of God. But when you're living in a sinful life without Jesus Christ, you will not make heaven your home. You can open your eyes if you want. We've all fallen short. But Jesus made a way for all of us. We took communion this morning. And recognize the way that he made for every one of us this morning. You may have moved one time. You may have come to the altar at one time. And you may have said, God, come into my heart. Not knowing what you were saying. Just come up just because everybody else did. And then all of a sudden, you go back in the same way you were living, back in the same world that you were living in, the same life that you were living. No change ever occurred in your life. That's the place that the enemy wants to put us. He wants to put us in those places and make us comfortable in those places to think that we are going to make it and we are going to hit the mark or we are going to make the mark. But I'm telling you right now, if you're living in that kind of an illusion, you're wrong and you're mistaken because the enemy wants you to read your Bible. Listen, he wants you to go ahead and read your Bible. He wants you to set people around you that are, that are Christians. He don't care about any of those things. He don't care that you read your Bible. He don't even care if you pray every now and then. The biggest thing that he cares about is you receive the Holy Spirit. That's one of the things that he does not want you to have is Holy Spirit. Because when you get Holy Spirit, you get that guide, that internal guide. You no longer lean on people, no longer lean on the things of the world, but you lean on the Holy Spirit. And there's some of you in here that have not received Holy Spirit. You've not received the things of God that he really, really wants you to have in your life because of the illusion that is in front of you that you're okay where you're at. You're okay in the lost state that you're at. And I'm telling you this morning, you're not. You're not okay if you think of suicide. And if you've thought of suicide, it doesn't mean that you're going to hell. It just means that things are not right in your life. It means things need to be shifted in your life and you need to move toward the mark and toward the things of God and what he has for you. We might be able to hit the mark, and, and there's a, if we put that mark up here, that, that, that target up here, we might be able to hit the target and you might hit it like right over here and you might, you might make it into heaven. But you didn't hit the mark that you needed to hit. And reach everyone that you needed to reach and live the fullness of life that you needed to live. You might be over here thinking of suicide. Doesn't mean you're not a Christian at all. You might be over here thinking of those things. Or living a bad life. Or you might be outside of the target. Totally out of the will of God. Totally in the dark without Jesus. We're supposed to hit the mark. Our goal is to stay center. Our goal is to hit this mark right here. Does anybody know anything about bullets? Anybody? We have any snipers in the room? Like actual snipers in the room? Your sniper. Sister. Our sister over here is a sniper. Hallelujah. I'm not a sniper myself. I went to the police academy. I, I, I shot expert at the police academy. I loved it. Learning about bullets. I love learning about shooting. I love shooting. I'm going to talk to you a minute about a 10 caliber round. Anybody know what a 10 caliber round is? There's nine, there's nine millimeters. There's 10 millimeters. A 10 millimeter round. So this is what I'm going to talk about this morning. A 10 millimeter round, if you're right here and you're shooting at that target, I guarantee if you, if you got your sight in on that target and you're going to hit that target, it's going to hit right here. The, at this distance. But when you start walking further back and further back and getting further away and further away from God, 
When you start getting further away from that target, it makes it a little bit harder. The target's a little bit further. And if you don't know, listen, if you don't know your ammunition, if you don't know your ammunition in the world, this is your ammunition. This right here will get you to the center of that target. This right here will get you to the center of the target. Now, some of these rounds, listen, these 10 millimeter rounds, and they're nice rounds. I love shooting them. It's a, it's a, hunt, a hunting gun. I love it. I love having my 10 millimeter rifle. But if I'm back here and I'm 100 yards away from the target now, and I'm 100 yards away, and I've sighted my target in, I've sighted my gun in at, at, 10 yards, and I'm hitting bullseye every time, every time I'm hitting center. But now I move back to 100 yards, and what the enemy wants to do is get you confused. He's like, you're on target. You're still on target, and you might have your sight sighted in, and that red dot might be on that target. But let me tell you, if you're 100 yards away and you're using a certain grain of bullet, you're not going to hit that target. You're not going to hit that target because when you're 100 yards back from the target, you're 100 yards away, that bullet is going to drop around 10 inches, which is going to make you miss the target, miss the mark. When you don't know your bullet, you don't know your environment, you don't know your, your, your distance from the cross, you don't recognize the darkness that you're living in, that's why you want to commit suicide. That's why you want to do those things because you're so far away and you're not studying the ammunition that you have to have to make heaven center, to make the mark, the, the most center part of the mark. Sure, we can make heaven by hitting the outer edges, but we cannot have the fullness that God wants for us unless we're in the center, unless we're dead center of that mark. We have to understand our ammunition. So what I'm saying is, if you are shooting from five, 10 yards away, you're going to hit it here. But if you're 100 yards away, you're going to be off target. 200 yards away, you're going to be off target. But what do you have to do if you're off target? If you know anything about shooting, you have to raise your gun up. You have to take it up that 10 inches because the fall of the bullet, the bullet's going to go like this, it's going to come out of the gun, and it's going to rise. But at a certain distance, when you sight it in, it's going to rise, and it's going to fall, and it's going to be right at the same distance that it was right here at the gun. But if you get further back and you don't calibrate for that further, further back, it's going to fall, and you're going to miss the target. And that's what most people are doing. They're missing the target because they're not getting the message of God in their heart, in their lives. They're not living it out and doing what God has called them to do. They're just not. The message is simple. We must hit the mark. We must make the mark. We must not get distracted by the illusions that are in front of us. When I was at the police academy, we, we shot, we had to shoot at different times. And if you guys play that video, we had to shoot at different times. And I love the target shooting. I love shooting. And this doesn't do justice at all for what I'm trying to, to show you here. But when I was at the police academy, we literally had to shoot and they would turn lights on, sirens on. They would turn strobe lights on, all this stuff. And to us, the target seemed like it was moving. But really, the target was stationary. It was in one place. And we had to learn that in the midst of the world, in the midst of the illusions that the enemy tries to bring in front of us, that we have to know that Jesus never moves. His target never moves. Our, our goal never changes. The method might change, but he never changes. He's today the same today, yesterday, and forever. God is the same. He will not change. That target will not ever move. So when the enemy comes in, he tries to tell you, you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. The target, you're okay. You're not. You're getting to the place where you're out, and you'll miss your target. The target stayed the same when the lights were on, when the sirens were going. The target stayed the same. I just had to realize that it was still there. I had to realize that the target was still right there, right in front of me. And I couldn't get distracted by all that was going on. 
But some people are getting distracted and are getting out of the way of God. They're getting out of what's truth, which is the word of God. They're getting out of what God has for them. And Father, I thank you this morning that that you're getting us in line, Lord, that you're getting us to this place. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 3.11. John the Baptist, I want to talk about these men that were, I don't, I don't really know a lot about these 12 men in the Bible other than they were baptized, it says, by the baptism of John. And we'll go on to see that. But it says in Matthew 3, 11, it says, As for me, I baptize you with water of repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. And I'm not even able, I'm not even fit to remove his sandals or remove his sandals from his feet. He's the one that will come and baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. And this is what's happening, that, that God wants to baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire, but we don't want to interact with that. We don't want to take that on. We don't want to understand the things of Holy Spirit. How many of you speak in your prayer language? How many of you pray in tongues? There's a bunch of you that don't. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to get you to where you're comfortable not speaking in tongues, not praying in your language. We must understand that that is a key part of living for God and being in that center place of God. Being able to pray in our prayer language. Being able to pray in that language. So I want to give opportunity this morning. What happened was John had baptized people with the baptism of repentance. But he said there's one coming that will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. There's one coming after me that will baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire. In the world we live in, a lot of people have not even seen that. They don't even understand that. They don't even know what that is at all. And when Paul was traveling... Him and Apollos were traveling, and they split off, and Apollos went to Corinth. Now, Apollos was a man who was baptized under John too. Apollos was a man that loved Christ, and he loved Holy Spirit. But what happened was, Apollos, in, this, in, the, in 18 chapter, um, Acts chapter 18, verse 29, or 18, verse 25, says, This man has been instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the Spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus. Being acquainted with the baptism of John the Baptist. So now we have this man who is affiliated with John the Baptist and he got baptized that water baptism. But also he heard what John said in Matthew 3.11 that Jesus is coming and he's going to baptize you with Holy Spirit and with fire which is what we must operate out of. But then we have, if you go on a little further, then we have these 12 men. In Acts 19.1, it says, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, and Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Now, these men were from Ephesus, and I don't know if they moved to Ephesus later on after John had passed away, after his head was served on a platter or not. But they were in Ephesus and finding some disciples there. Now, John found, now Paul found some disciples. This wasn't what happened was, I believe he was there ministering, and he ran into some men, and he got talking with them and maybe invited them to understand who Jesus was. And they said, well, we are disciples. So then Paul starts to say, well, if you are disciples, have you received Holy Spirit? Have you received Holy Spirit, since you became disciples. And these guys, these 12 guys said, we don't even know what the Holy Spirit is. We don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. These same guys were baptized under John, they said. 
We're not even really sure if they were or not, or if they were posers. We don't even know. But there were 12 people. They wasn't even named as disciples of John. But here I believe in, in my illustration is, is that there, there's a situation here where these same men, you got this Apollos who was baptized under John the Baptist, full of the Spirit of God, and then you have these 12 people who claim to be disciples of John don't even know about the Spirit of God. Did they miss the message in Matthew 3.11? Did they miss the message of Jesus will baptize you with fire and Holy Spirit? Or were they posers? I don't know. But what, it, what I'm telling you is this morning is that they did not know the full gospel. They didn't know the full message. So they lived their life not knowing the full message. And had Paul not come across them, they may have never seen the fullness of God. They may have never taken on the fullness of speaking in tongues or praying in another language. Paul lays hands on them in that verse, that going down the verse, and they receive the baptism of Holy Spirit. And this morning, I want you guys to understand the importance of knowing your ammunition. When there's a problem, when there's a struggle, when there's a battle in your life, if you know the Word of God inside and out, you will be able to hit the mark every time. No matter what distance you are, no matter what environment you're in, no matter what the situation looks like, no matter how dire the situation is, if you know the Word of God, you know the ammo of God, and you will be able to hit the mark every time using this. Some of you don't pray in the prayer language. Some of you have never received Holy Spirit in your life. You might have came to the altar. You might have asked Jesus to come in your heart. You might have asked Jesus to come in your heart and live in your life. You might still be in a mess. You might seek, be seeking sanctification, trying to understand what it means to be consecrated. If you don't have Holy Spirit, it's, you're going to have a rough go. You're going to have a rough go at it. What I want you to do is today, I want, I want some of you that don't know Holy Spirit, all of you don't know Holy Spirit, I want you to receive Holy Spirit today. Basically, what I want you to do is get on the right highway to get you through to the mark and not be on the roundabouts. Once you get on the highway and go straight through and hit the mark, instead of being out on 465 and coming back around to the highway, I'd rather you just get on the highway now. That way you don't miss what God has for you. We can get on the roundabouts. It might bring us back around eventually, but we're going to go through a lot of hell to get there. I'm an example. I went, I mean, if I would have gave my life to God when I was a young boy, I would have, I wished I would have. Probably now I wouldn't even change a thing knowing where I'm at now. But some of us are on the outer edge and we're on 465 and we're, we're we're going to come back around eventually. We're on the edge, and we might be saved, and we might make heaven our home, but we're not going to be in the center until we get back in that place. If you've ever been on 465, it takes quite a while to get from one into another. You know, from you get on get off at 65 and go all the way back around to 65. It takes a while, especially with all the roadblocks and the jams and all the traffic and all the the road construction. It takes you a while, and you see a lot, and you might get in. You know, you might get in a wreck on the way around. I don't know. But I know that the quickest way to the mark is going straight and going forward. Is there anyone here that has not received Holy Spirit? We're going to have you come up. If you have not, just come up here. And uh, anybody else? Listen. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of at, at all. Nothing to be ashamed of by not having received the Holy Spirit at all. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's one of the most powerful things. And I remember, I remember this testimony of um, a young man that, that received Holy Spirit over in the other building. And he went to work and he said, 
like he was struggling making ends meet, getting enough time, getting enough job done in a day to be able to get home and get his stuff done at home or spend time with his family. And the moment that he went to work and he started praying in tongues while he was at work under his breath, he just prayed in tongues. He got twice as much stuff done in twice less time. He made twice as much money praying in the spirit. The time just went. The day just went. It's just Holy Spirit showing him and just magnifying that to him that, that he wanted him to have time with family. He wanted him to spend that time. Is there anybody else? Listen. Come on. I'll, I'll wait on you guys. Listen, this is so valuable. It's so valuable. If you don't speak in tongues, if you don't pray in tongues, um, it, I mean, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's a powerful thing. Um, I, I, I'm daily praying in tongues. And one of the, one of the awesome things is, you know, um, you know, like, like, like your situation. I don't always know the, I, I know that God's will is for you to be healed, but I don't know the timing of his, he knows the big spectrum of everything. So when I pray for you, I want to pray in the spirit because when I pray in the spirit, I'm praying the perfect will of God over you. When I pray in my own words, in my own language, I might be praying what I want or out of desperation of what I want. But I really, when I pray in the Spirit, I'm praying His perfect will over you. And that's what it gives us the ability to do. The studies show that when you pray in the Spirit, that your mind literally will shut down to the point they can't even hardly read what's going on in your mind. Because you're so focused on Him. And the world is totally shut out. Totally shut out. Shelly is my wife. Pastor Shelly is really, really, um, really, and she's really good at this. So I, I, want, I want her to be able to pray over you. But I remember when I first received Holy Spirit, listen, I went to a church that they said you were going to hell if you spoke in tongues. Yeah. Yeah, they mocked it and mocked it preacher come in, I remember one time, and he said, should have bought a Ford, should have bought a Ford, should have bought a Ford, should have bought a Ford. Just making fun of him. Should have bought a Ford. Chevy, but I mean, he was saying, should have bought a Ford. Mocking it, mocking it, mocking it. And I, and I said, man, I know there's something to this. There's too much about it in the Word for there not to be something about Holy Spirit. And I met Shelly, and I remember praying for Shelly, and I remember praying for her heart. And I saw seven cords, black cords, just like these stripes right here, in her heart. And I just started praying for her. And when I started praying for her, I started speaking in tongues for the very, very first time. And I didn't even understand it. I said, what was that? What? I felt something along with it, you know, that fire that came with it. I'm like, what just happened to me? And she said, you just received your prayer language. I'm like, what is that? I didn't understand any of it. But, man, I took off with it, and God just showed me. He showed me. And so I'm going to let her pray with you. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with her, but I'm going to let her pray with it because she's prayed for many people and um, they've received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and really, just open your hearts right now. I know the message is a little different today, and, and um, I, just, I just felt a, a, just a thickness in the atmosphere. I can't explain it, but, um, but um, and that's okay. Um, this, this, is, this is the most important part of the, me- the service today, right here, what we're doing right now. And so, yeah, I'll let you. I just want to share real quick. This is nothing um, with your mind. Your spirit resides in our inner being. Um, I received my prayer language by um, seeing three words written out on a chalkboard. I'm a visionary person. That's how God made me. I didn't want it to be fake or goofy. You know, repeat after me, blah, 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 blah. You know, I didn't want that. I wanted it to be genuine. So every one of you guys, you're here because you want more. The baptism, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is a true gentleman. Um, not every gift is about the tongues. There's going to be gifts. You're going to start seeing yourself flow in. And as well as the gifts of the Spirit, I always love to ask the Lord to um, baptize you as well, or give you the fruits of the Spirit. Does that make sense? The fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, patience, self-control. I love, if you guys are reading that in the New Testament, 
we should be operating as Christians in those as much as the Holy Spirit in, in obedience. With Pastor Jason, when it was one of our first dates, he came from Terre Haute and the Lord showed him to do this and he was just in obedience is why he received the prayer language. The prayer language could have come at any time, but God just chose it as he was obedient and speaking over my heart. Does that make sense? Every person's going to be different. It could happen when you're in the shower. It could happen when you're driving down the road. It's just the spirit comes alive in you. And it's powerful. I mean, there is a reason. It's called an empowerment. It, is, it will empower you. It will give you wisdom. You guys, I I've th I've think of your situations with your health stuff. It's a, it could be a gift of wisdom that comes upon you. And you know with that, no doubt that you're to do such and such. You, you see what I'm saying? It's Or not do. Yeah. Um, he, the Holy Spirit is a great helper. I don't know if you could ask questions later if you have any more. But um, there is nothing goofy. He is a gentleman. The Lord loves every one of you. It's no different than asking for salvation. So you're just going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith, just like you would have your your salvation to Jesus to serve him. So um, let's just yeah. explain to him real, real quick. What was your first words that you saw on the board? Oh. Shalaka Rama Delante was written three words on the board. Shalaka Rama Delante. And I said that in prayer and with my own mind for, for nine years. That was it. Well, then I received um, some healing in Brownsville Revival. And then it was just like a gush of a river, like it talks about in the Word. So as he took some junk out of me, he just filled me with more. So, and ask that as well. Lord, anything in me that's not of you, which we do with the water and everything else, I think you all know that pretty well here. Um, then he just in, fills us more and more. And there is a thing going on in our season right now in the world that God is baptizing with fire, fresh fire. This is not, this is not anything um, strange. It's a, I feel like it's even a new thing he's doing. Right, Randy? Like you all know, many of you know. So um, this is good timing. Great timing. Yeah. So, again, my, my first time of, other than... I don't even know what I said when I prayed with you, but was my words that I had for months and months and months. And as I pressed into healing in my life and pressed into walking out healing in my life, my prayer language becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And now I pray more in the spirit than I do out of the spirit. And that's what God wants for you. So if he gives you a word, the enemy, I want to tell you what the enemy is going to come in and he's going to say, that's stupid. That sounds stupid. That sounds crazy. That sounds weird. For her to say, Shalaka Rama Delente, Shalaka Rama Delente, Shalaka Rama Delente, the enemy's gonna say, Wow, you got three words. Woohoo. Woohoo. Recognize. recognize again, recognize how he operates. He operates out of optical illusion. He wants to make things seem as if they're not or seem as if they are. This is a powerful moment right now, a powerful moment for every one of you to be able to receive Holy Spirit in this way, to receive your prayer language. So um, we're just going to go, we're going we're gonna to start, we're going to start with you, Randy, we're going to end with David unless someone else comes. I'll let, I'll let you do it. But let's uh, let's have some people um, let's have some people stand up behind some of the people just for catchers. Um, listen, um, there might be someone behind you. There's going to be someone behind you. So if uh, if the spirit um, if you <laughs> if you fall out, someone will catch you. If they don't, then you know it's of the Lord and He'll catch you. Um, so um, Todd Smith started doing that. Pastor Todd Smith started doing that. He started um, not putting people behind people, and, and they, they fell out. It was really of the Lord, and uh, he protected them. I remember when, um, um, who was it in here that fell? It was Linda. 
Linda Schatz, and she, she, she went out in the Holy Spirit over at the other church, and she fell, and she hit her head on the corner of that stage, and I, 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 I was like thinking in my mind, here we go, and man, I thought there was going to be blood gushing everywhere, but Holy Spirit caused her fall, and he caused that cushion, whatever it was to cushion her, but she hit on the corner of this. She had no mark on her head, nothing on her head, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful. You remember that? I'm grateful for that. So God's going to catch you, David. So I, 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 I've been, I was sitting back there when he started talking about, like, the Holy Spirit because I don't have a prayer language, and the Lord started working on me a little bit back there. And so every single one of us sitting up here, if, if you're like me, your heart's probably pounding. When you got saved for the first time, your heart started pounding when you gave your life to Christ. It's that another moment. So everybody out there, if your heart's not pounding right now and you have a prayer language, God bless you. If your heart is pounding like ours, you should be up here with us. Because that's how you know the Lord's working on your heart right now. So I would ask Pastor Jason and Shelly just to give another few minutes for anybody to not miss this opportunity and not miss this moment. Well, everyone else sitting behind them, just stretch your arms out. Stretch your arm out towards them. Father, we thank you. God, we worship you. You are our King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, we thank you for Jesus as our Savior. Lord, you see the hearts of the people. We ask, God, that you release your fire, that they are wanting the fullness of all you have to offer, Lord. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is in your word. Father, it's truth. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you tag team Jesus as he ascended, you descended. And God, it was your perfect plan just to empower us to be able to walk and have victorious lives on this earth and to further your kingdom. Holy Spirit, you're welcome to, to reach and fill every person that's wanting it, whether they're in their chair or at the stage, at the altar. Spirit, come down and fill them with the fullness of what you are and who you are. That they receive it. We receive, Holy Spirit, every good and perfect gift you have for us. Holy Spirit, fire, come down. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Father. If you have your prayer language, if you have it right now, listen, I want you to pray in your prayer language. I'm going to give you a definition. There's going to be a time that someone's going to speak out and they're going to be speaking in, in tongues and there's going to be someone in the room that will interpret what they're saying. When we pray in our own personal prayer language, when, they're, when we're up here um, praying, when we're singing and praying in our language, that's a whole different thing. That's our own personal language. There is a time that someone will call out and you'll know it, and then someone will have to give a definition for that prayer. Those things are coming. God is moving that direction for this house. He's waiting for a time even such as this for that to happen. So we're going to go right now. I'm just going to go to everyone. I'm just going to lay my Bible on your head. I'm going to pray the prayer over you and just uh, that God would move right now, and we just thank you. Father, we just thank you right now. Jesus, you know everything right now in this young man. Father, fill him with the Holy Spirit right now. Fill him up with the Holy Spirit right now, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way right now. Have your way, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Guys, listen. If you have your prayer language, I'm saying pray in your prayer language. Randy, show them how to pray out loud in the prayer language. That's how we pray in the prayer line. We pray loud. Pray it out loud. I'm giving you the opportunity to pray out loud right now. Hallelujah, Jesus.
going? Let him have it, daughter. Let him have it. Let him have it. Let him go. Let go of it. 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 it all. Give it all. Let it go of all of it right now. Let him have his way. Let him have his way right now, Jesus. Jesus, continue Let him have his way, bro. And then we edify ourselves and build ourselves up in our own Release it all. Speak it out. Speak it out. Speak it out. Everything you can speak it out. Jesus with everything right now. Fill him up, Holy Spirit. Fill him up right now. Fill him up right now, Jesus. Fill him up right now, Jesus. Let everything go. Let everything go. Fill him up, Jesus, right now. He's got you. He's got you. Let him have it. Let him have his way. He's got you. Banda, 
Spirit, fill him up. Everything, God, the healing right now in this body, Lord, every part of it, Lord, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Father, right now. God, you love him so much. You love him so much. We just praise you for him. Holy Spirit, have your way. Everything, download everything in him. Melt it all away. Melt it all away. Melt it all away. Melt it all away. Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you, Father, right now. Hallelujah. Melting it away, Lord. Peace, peace, peace. Shala Kodisi. Let him have his way. Let him have his way, Dan. Let him have his way. Shala Kodisi. Holy Spirit. Shala Kodisi. Bro, I know that you're just saved. I know that you just came to Christ, and I know that he loves you so much. And don't be shocked if you uh, have waves of laughter and joy come upon you because um, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. And many times in our lives, we need the joy to be our strength. That's what the Word says. So the Lord will bring waves of joy and laughter on you to get you through a season that may be tough. Um, so don't think it's weird. Just laugh and go with it. <laughs> There's many places in the Word where uh, joy and laughter won battles at war. So um, if you're going through a battle, spend some time laughing and see what happens.
glory to God. Thank you. When the Holy Spirit shows up, there's always a spirit of joy. So when I was standing behind Dan and Randy, just, you know, it got on me. I'm just trying to catch somebody. And uh, it always comes in my eyes first. I can't really explain it. I mean, I know this could be a um, carnal way to explain it, but if you've ever smoked weed or something before, your eyes get all heavy and it just comes on you. You know, when the Lord comes on you, there's a manifestation. Amen. And even if you're not trying to get in it, it'll get on you. But I think from Pastor Jason saying, I am the same way as he is that sometimes I just pray more in the spirit than anything else because I run out of stuff to pray for. You know, you get away from yourself, you pray for other people, but the verse that kept popping up in me is in Jude. There's only one chapter of Jude and in verse 20. And what that does and what it says is that when you pray in the spirit, you build yourself up in your most holy faith. And it causes you to walk in love and if you do that for any measure of time, what begins to happen is whatever could have been ailing you or bothering you or troubling you begins to go away. And all of a sudden you get a type of a spiritual confidence that you didn't have before you started praying in the Spirit. Because now the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is our guide, our comforter, our teacher, our strengthener, our advocate, he has permission because you are now co-laboring with him. It doesn't make any sense for us to be Christians and live a little bit better than a sinner. Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We are supernatural people. So being able to pray in the Spirit edifies us, which the word means builds us up. So whatever you're going to go through, it behooves you to pray in the spirit so you build yourself up. I've woke up days where I just felt immediately like a whip pup. So much stuff was going on. And if I dwelled on that, that would be my thoughts for the remainder of the day. I would be worrying, right? The word says, don't worry. Don't take thought of tomorrow, right? But when you pray in the spirit, he takes over and like Jason was saying about the guy that started praying the Spirit all day long, I've done those same kind of things. And you just get more done. Things come to you. Your mind gets regulated. Next thing you know, the word starts coming up. You start speaking. You start decreeing. And the next thing you know, things start happening. You can't do it yourself. The Holy Spirit does it. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Uve. So I, I don't know whether you, um, I, I know that some of you um, experience um, a physical falling, falling out. Um, keep praying. Keep praying in your spirit. Keep honing it in. Keep tuning it in. Keep sighting it in to hit that mark that he has for you. Father, we just thank you, Lord, right now for this service, Lord. You had total charge of this, Lord. Thank you, God, that we could get out of the way and you get in the way and just move how you want to move. Lord, there might have been some here that walked away, didn't understand what was going on, and that's okay too. We just pray that you would go with them and be with them and give them that direction of understanding, Lord. And Lord, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Some of you might have the munchies right now. I don't know, but I am hungry, so let's go eat. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys.